Hello, we're glad you've joined us for this live webinar. As part of our webinar mini-series, today we will have part two of Dissecting the Tumor Microenvironment Tools for Isolation and Flow Analysis. The speaker's title today is Isolation of Tumor Infiltrating Leukocytes, Kills, and Optimized Workflows for Faster and Improved Analysis. I am Judy O'Rourke of LabRoots, and I'll be moderating this session. Today's educational web seminar is presented by LabRoots, the leading scientific social networking website and provider of virtual events and webinars advancing scientific collaboration and learning. It's brought to you by Miltony Biotech. Miltony Biotech is a global provider of products and services that advance biomedical research and cellular therapy. The company's innovative tools support research at every level, from basic research to translational research to clinical application. This integrated portfolio enables scientists and clinicians to obtain, analyze, and utilize the cell. Miltony Biotech's technologies cover techniques of sample preparation, cell isolation, cell sorting, flow cytometry, cell culture, molecular analysis, and preclinical imaging. Their more than 25 years of expertise spans research areas including immunology, stem cell biology, neuroscience, and cancer, and clinical research areas like hematology, graft engineering, and apheresis. The company also offers comprehensive scientific support, consultation, and expert training. To learn more about Miltony Biotech, visit www.miltonybiotech.com. Let's get started. You can pose questions to the speaker during the presentation while they're fresh in your mind. To do so, simply type them into the drop-down box located on the far left of your screen labeled Ask a Question and click on the Send button. Questions will be answered after the presentation. To enlarge the slide window, click on the arrows at the top right-hand corner of the presentation window. If you experience technical problems seeing or hearing the presentation, just click on the Support tab found at the top right of the presentation window or report your problem by typing it into the Answer a Question box located on the far left of your screen. This is an educational webinar and thus offers free continuing education credits please click on the Continuing Education Credits tab located at the top right of the presentation window and follow the process of obtaining your credits. I now present today's speaker, Cesar Evaristo, Ph.D. Dr. Evaristo received his Ph.D. at the University of Paris Descartes in France in 2009. After seven years as a research scientist in the U.S. and Germany, he joined Miltony Biotech in 2016 as a team coordinator of the R&D Tumor Immunology Group. He focuses on immuno-oncology preclinical research, target discovery, and oncology-related product development. Dr. Evaristo will now begin his presentation. Thank you, Judy. I'd like to welcome you all to this webinar. I will start by giving a short introduction, followed by a few slides highlighting some of the practical challenges that I faced over the years as a tumor immunology researcher and are surely common to many of you and our colleagues. Finally, I will tell you how we generated solutions for these challenges and were able to significantly improve our TIL research workflows. Immunotherapy has proven clinical efficacy and tremendous potential in multiple cancers. But even patients who experience clinical benefit from these new agents often achieve only partial responses, such that additional work is necessary to improve immunotherapeutic strategies, namely to fully understand the dynamic interactions between the tumor microenvironment and the immune system and the effects of the different therapies in TIL biology. Syngenic mouse tumor models represent the gold standard to study immune responses to tumors and analyze the effects of immunotherapy as they possess a fully competent immuno immune repertoire. However, the phenotypic and functional analysis of TILS is technically challenging and labor-intensive. As this figure illustrates, solid tumors are complex tissues containing multiple cell types. The amount and composition of tumor infiltrating leukocytes is highly variable, which complicates the analysis of individual populations. At this time, we would like to uh, prompt you uh, uh, a, a question that you're going to be seeing on your um, uh, screen. Please answer the, the question.
Indeed, tilt frequencies can be very low. For example, one of the most widely used syngenaic mouse tumor models is set up by inoculation of about half a million B16F10 melanoma cells subcutaneously in black 6 mice. These cells will establish a solid tumor that can be analyzed typically between one and three weeks after tumor inoculation. These tumors are typically between 200 and 1,000 milligrams and contain around 10 to the 8 cells per gram. The necrotic areas of these tumors are quite significant, such that the percentage of viable cells can be as low as 20%. Of those, less than 1% are CD8 or CD4 positive T cells. In these dot plots, I'm showing an actual example of flow cytometry analysis of a dissociated B16F10 tumor. After acquiring over 200,000 cells and getting on live cells, lymphocytes based on forward scatter, side scatter, and single cells, we ended up with only 266 CDHT cells. If we would like to further phenotype these cells and identify the subpopulations of infiltrating CDHT cells, we'd need many more cells. And that can be very time consuming. Using this same example, we calculated that in order to acquire 5,000 CDHT cells for proper phenotypic characterization of the sub subpopulations, we would need to acquire over 4 million cells per sample. If we acquire the samples at a rate of 2,000 events per second, this would take 36 minutes per sample. And if the experiment contains 20 different samples, including different experimental conditions, controls, and replicas, we would need over 12 hours just for acquisition of the label cells. And even before getting to those cells, the mouse has to be sacrificed and the tumor resected. The tumor then has to be manually dissociated, followed by enzymatic digestion. The resulting suspension then needs to be filtered and often a density gradient centrifugation is applied to exclude some debris, dead cells, and tumor cells. The number of cells in the resulting suspension is counted. The cells are labeled with fluorescent antibodies and dyes and are then finally ready for the long acquisition times in front of the flow cytometer. I estimated the approximate amount of time required for each of these steps in my own experience. However, the gross majority of experiments are done using multiple mice. If, for example, we have an experiment with 20 mice, these times add up, and we can end up with a workflow that requires up to 20 hours to complete, which is far from ideal. Therefore, it is fundamental to use effective, innovative tools to streamline the workflow and generate high-quality data. To this end, we have developed solutions for all the steps of mainstream cancer research and established workflows, combining them to decrease the time required and increase the quality of the data generated. This, of course, starts with collecting and storing the tumor tissue. Sometimes, when working with large cohorts or the material has to be collected from multiple origins, or at different time points, or for any other reason, the tissue cannot be directly processed. During this storage period, necrosis and apoptosis must be avoided, and the functional properties or activation status of cells must remain unchanged to prevent causing bias in downstream analysis. The MAX tissue storage solution has been developed to allow an optimized storage of fresh organ and tissue samples. It has been tested and validated on a variety of human and mouse tissues, including tumors, lung, heart, brain, spleen, skin, kidney, and skeletal muscle. This graph shows the number of cells per gram of tissue recovered after storage in different solutions for 48 hours at four degrees or room temperature as compared to the fresh tissue on the column on the right. And this graph 
shows the viability of the cells in the same conditions. As you can see, tissues stored in max tissue storage solution at 4 degrees maintain the original cellular yield and viability even after 48 hours, with no induction of apoptosis or increased in necrosis, and no cell activation or influence on marker expression. Once we are ready to process the tumors, we automated the tissue dissociation using the GentleMax and the tumor dissociation kits for mouse. Using these tools, automated dissociation of multiple samples can be done in parallel. It combines both mechanical and enzymatic treatment for efficient dissociation. This means the disruption of extracellular matrix and cell adhesion components without destroying the integrity of the cell membrane while simultaneously preserving the cell surface epitopes. Indeed, optimal tissue dissociation can be essential for the recovery of the cells of interest. To illustrate this point, we resected a B16F10 tumor, divided it into two different samples, and dissociated them in the gentle max, either in the absence or presence of tumor dissociation kit enzymes. In the figure, we can see the expression of PD-1, TIM-3, and LAG-3 on CDH T cells recovered after the tumor was dissociated in the absence, in the top, versus the presence, in the bottom, of the tumor dissociation kit enzymes. PD-1, LAG-3, and TIM-3 identify a population of exhausted tumor reactive T cells that, as can be seen in the upper row, are not always released without optimized enzymatic digestion. These data show that enzymatic digestion is essential for the recovery of important till populations. Furthermore, we do in-house control of the quality of the enzymes used, and the tumor dissociation kit was optimized for epitope preservation. We tested over 200 epitopes, the vast majority of which was not affected by our enzyme composition. I'm not expecting you to be able to read this, but this list of tested epitopes can be accessed on our website. Once we have a cell suspension, we improved the isolation of TILs by developing microbead reagents for the enrichment of CD8, CD4, PAN T cells, or CD45 positive TILs directly from dissociated tumor tissue. Using these reagents, based on MAX technology, the dissociated tumor tissue is directly labeled with the specific microbeads optimized for use in solid tumor. The microbead labeled cells are then magnetically isolated, resulting in very efficient enrichment of the cells of interest. This process can be done manually using individual columns. It can be automated using the Automax Pro separator. For high throughput needs, the Multimax Cell24 separator plus allows the semi-automated isolation of up to 24 samples simultaneously. A high throughput cell isolation can also be fully automated using the Multimax X, which incorporates a liquid handling system. At this point, we would like to ask you another question that will be showing up on your screen. We resected B16 tumors, dissociated them using the GentleMax with the tumor dissociation kit, and compared the frequency of CD4, CD8, or total T cells among live cells, either in the bulk population or after specific isolation. These graphs show the frequency of the indicated cells in the bulk sample on the top row or after isolation on the bottom. On the left, for example, the frequency of CD4 T cells on B16F10 was 0.18% in the bulk tumor and 92.4% after isolation showing that magnetic isolation can increase the purity of the cells of interest up to 500-fold. The middle plots show the initial frequency of 
0.96% uh, CDH T cells in bulk B16F10 tumor being increased to over 80% purity. And on the right, PAN T cells in B16 OVA tumors increased from 6% to over 80% after isolation. We calculated the amount of time required if we wanted to analyze 5,000 cells of interest from the samples showed on the previous slide with or without magnetic isolation. Without enrichment, to analyze 5,000 CD4 T cells from a 0.18% frequency, you'd need to acquire almost 8 million cells. If you use a flow rate of 2,000 events per second, that would mean over one hour of fax time per sample. If you had 20 samples, you could be spending over 22 hours acquiring all samples. Or, more realistically, you would reduce the number of cells acquired per sample and compromise the quality of the data from your long experiment. However, by magnetically en enriching the T cells, we can acquire the same number of cells of interest in just about 20 minutes. These 20 minutes already include automated mixing and rinsing between samples on the max quant. We magnetically isolated T cells from multiple mouse tumor models, such as B16, 41, and CT26, and compared the frequency of T cells in the bulk sample versus after till isolation. These graphs show the frequency of CD4 on the left, CD8 in the middle, and total T cells on the right in cell suspensions from the different tumors indicated on the X axis before isolation in dark or after magnetic enrichment in light bars. As these graphs show, we consistently achieved over 80% purities among live cells in all the models we tested. We also measured T cell recovery after till isolation. These graphs show the number of viable CD4, CD8, or total T cells recovered per 10 million cells from suspensions of the different tumors specified. Typically, T cell isolation resulted in cell yields between 50 and 90%. Besides the time benefit, magnetic isolation greatly improved the quality of flow set cytometry analysis of tumor infiltrating T cells. We isolated B16 over tumors and phenotyped the CDH T cells by flow cytometry, either before or after CDH till isolation. These plots show the analysis of bulk tumor samples. After dead cell exclusion, on the top plots, going from the left to the right, we gated on lymphocytes, then single cells, then CD8 positive, and finally on antigens experienced CD44 positive T cells. On those cells, as you can see on the bottom row, we analyze the expression of several markers of interest to, to characterize tumor infiltrating T cells, such as PD1, LAG3, TIM3, CD39, TXCR3, and CD103. Due to the low number of CDH T cells analyzed, even though more than 150,000 events were acquired, it is difficult to draw high confidence conclusions from these data. However, acquisition of just 50,000 events from CDH2 isolated samples resulted in a much more robust phenotyping of the CDH T cell populations, as you can appreciate from these dot plots. T cell isolation was particularly important to assess the cell intrinsic functional properties of TIL. Tumor infiltrating T cells are often dysfunctional, which correlates with tumor growth. The mechanisms leading to T cell dysfunction can be either cell intrinsic, like energy or exhaustion, or ex extrinsic, like suppression and starvation. It's often important to be able to distinguish between these two types of mechanisms. A common functional assay used for T cell characterization consists in measuring the capacity of cells to produce cytokines, such as interferon gamma. 
This is done by restimulating cells in vitro in the presence of a secretion blocker for four hours, followed by intracellular staining of interferon gamma and analysis by flow cytometry. However, several immunomodulatory molecules are expressed in the tumor microenvironment, which can affect the readout from the functional assays. To illustrate this, we resected and dissociated 41 tumors, either isolated the T cells or not, restimulated the T cells or not with plate-bound anti-CD3 antibody for four hours at 37 degrees in the presence of brepharvin A, and then measured the frequency of cells that produced interferon gamma in the different conditions. This graph shows the frequency of CD8 T cells that produced interferon gamma when cultured in medium alone on the left or after restimulation on the right. When the cells were cultured in bulk, in dark, or after T cell isolation in light bars. Indeed, a higher percentage of CDH T cells produced interferon gamma in response to CD3 stimulation in the T cell isolated samples as compared to the bulk samples, indicating that factors present in the bulk sample suppressed CDH T cell function. This was confirmed when we reconstituted the original tumor composition by co-culturing the isolated cells with the negative fraction and no longer observed any functional difference when compared to cells that did not undergo the isolation process. Finally, the isolated tools were labeled with reaffinity antibodies and analyzed on the MaxQuant analyzer, a fully automated flow cytometer. At this point, we would like to ask you another question. Reaffinity antibodies are genetically engineered to enhance reproducibility and eliminate bias. All antibodies have one universal IgG1 isotype, which reduces the complexity of the experimental planning in a mutated FC region that eliminates FC receptor binding mediated background. We dissociated memory carcinoma tumors and labeled them with the hybridoma derived anti CDH antibody on the X axis, counterstained with an anti CD3 staining on the Y axis, either without FC receptor blocking reagent on the left or with FCR blocking on the right. As you can see, Using the ibridoma-derived antibody resulted in the false identification of CD8-alpha positive cells within the CD3-negative cell population. This experimental artifact was most likely caused by unspecific binding of hybridoma-derived antibodies to FC-gamma receptors on the other cells, as it was significantly reduced when using an FCR, uh, FC receptor-blocking reagent. In contrast, labeling with reaffinity antibodies wasn't changed in the presence or absence of FC receptor blocking, therefore providing a more exact analysis of the different cell populations. Using these optimized workflows, we were able to reduce the time required to do the experiment I described in the beginning of this presentation from between 8 and 20 hours down to around 2 hours. This was done by collecting the tumors on the previous day and storing them in tissue storage solution, performing the automated dissociation of multiple samples in parallel using the GentleMax and tumor dissociation kit, automated cell counting with a max quant, and magnetic isolation of the cells of interest in all samples in parallel using the Multimax separator. Furthermore, Isolation of T cells allowed us to interrogate the cell intrinsic functional properties without the influence of the highly immunomodulatory cells present in the tumor microenvironment. Finally, cells were labeled with reaffinity antibodies, which reduced background and increased the quality of the data, and analyzed using a MaxQuant analyzer. This instrument decreased hands on time 
as well as total acquisition time by facilitating fast and fully automated sample processing, including sample mixing and absolute cell counting. In conclusion, we showed you that optimized tumor dissociation with enzymatic digestion is essential for recovery of important TIL populations. That reaffinity antibodies facilitate TIL analysis by eliminating background, and that magnetic isolation of T cells from mouse tumors can dramatically decrease the time of analysis while increasing the quality of the data generated. Furthermore, it can prevent bias in the functional characterization of TILs. We believe that using these solutions will facilitate tumor immunology research and contribute to the development of better cancer immunotherapies. I would like to finish by acknowledging my team and all my colleagues at Milton Biotech that made it possible to put together these workflows, as well as our collaborators at the University of Göttingen and at the University of Bonn for providing material and testing our workflows off-site. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Evaristo, for your presentation. A quick reminder for our audience on how to submit questions. Simply type them into the drop-down box located on the far left of your presentation window labeled Ask a Question and click on the Send button. Dr. Evaristo will answer as many questions as time permits. The first question is, I work with my own collagenase dissociation cocktail. Is this compatible with your TIL microbeads? Um, okay, the issue with any homebrew dissociation cocktail of enzymes uh, that contain, for example, collagenase is that accrued collagenase will have additional enzymatic side activities. And this can contain, for example, triplic activities. And the issue is that the, the site activity will differ from lot to lot, which makes it impossible for you to have consistent results. Um, we, have, um, uh, we have seen uh, ourselves that uh, when, we are using, when we were using collagenase to dissociate uh, the, the tumors before we had the tumor dissociation kits, Sometimes we would lose um, um, expression of molecules, like for example CD4 on our cells, and sometimes we wouldn't. To control this variance in our results um, and to avoid uh, having to test um, each new lot of collagenase, we decided to standardize our dissociation. So we carefully chose three purified enzymes, uh, giving us the advantage of controlling their activity. This allows us to even predict before we start the, the experiment which epitopes will be sensitive to our dissociation enzymes. Uh, as I showed during the presentation, we have a PDF list available in our website where we tested over 200 common epitopes and showed their sensitivity. Uh, only about 5% show some degree of sensitivity. When using trypsin, on the other hand, over 50% of these um, epitopes uh, would be affected. So even in the case that you find your epitope to be sensitive to our kit, all you have to do is to um, preserve all epitopes is to reduce enzyme R in the kit by 80%. So only using 20% uh, of uh, the suggested concentration. Um, you will decrease your recovery a little bit, but you will preserve your epitopes. So to answer your question, if you can be 100% sure that your dissociation cocktail never cleaves off the required epitopes for subsequent cell separation and analysis, then yes, it's uh, compatible. But especially when you are looking to analyze TILs afterwards and require a large variety of markers, I would be careful. Well, thank you. Your next question is, I also work with human material. Do you have similar solutions for that? Uh, currently, we offer our optimized TIL microbeads for CD45, CD4, CD8, and a combination of CD4 and CD8 for mouse. Uh, just in March, we um, launched our CD45 TIL microbeads for human tissue, and we are currently working on the, TILs, uh, on the uh, T cell specific CD4 and CD8 uh, isolations also for, for human but I cannot give you a date for the release yet. Generally, we are aiming at a release 
at the end of the, the, the year, but um, you can definitely use the CD45 till microbeads for human. Thank you. How do your normal microbeads differ from the till microbeads? Uh, our normal microbeads were developed for a different purpose. If you look at CD4 microbeads, for example, one of their key applications would be to get the CD4 T cells from spleens where they are fairly abundant. Uh, this is very different when working with tumors. T cells are rare populations in a tumor, as I showed you during the, the presentation. And so and, and, uh, the, the, the tumor itself uh, is, is, is a tissue that is very different from the, from the healthy tissue. We optimize the TIL microbeads specifically for the tumor tissue. They perform better in the tumor, and we strongly recommend you to use them for the tumor tissue. Thank you. It looks like we have time for one more question. And it is, for me, viability and purity are the most important factors. What kind of viabilities and purities do you usually experience after tissue dissociation and then TIL isolation? We usually achieve purities between 80% and 95% among live cells. The viability of isolated uh, cells is increased as compared with the non-isolated samples, but it depends a lot on the, the, the type and size of the tumor that you're working with, and also the initial frequency of dead cells. But we, um, so if, if your downstream applications require high uh, viability, I strongly recommend using our dead cell removal kit prior to the till isolation. When we did this, we achieved over 90% viability. So I guess uh, this was the last question. I would like to um, thank you all for attending this webinar and your interesting questions, and hope you enjoy the rest of the day. Until next time. I would like to once again thank Dr. Evaristo for his presentation. I'd like to thank the audience for joining us today and for their interesting questions. Questions we did not have time for today will be addressed by the speaker via the contact information you provided at the time of registration. We would like to thank our sponsor, Milton Biotech, for underwriting today's educational webcast. This webcast can be viewed on demand through November 2018. LabRoots will alert you via email when it's available for replay. We encourage you to share that email with your colleagues who may have missed today's live event. Until next time, goodbye.